Okay. And it really was an interesting take from just in Finsbury Square. London is a spoilt for choice when it comes to food, but there's one brand that really has global ambition. That brand is Presse Manger, and it's got a pretty interesting ethos. It's not just quality, it's also about speed and Morning. satisfaction. I'm really well, thanks. How are you? Can I get a skinny filter? Skinny filter, please. The aim is for each and every customer to be served within 60 seconds. Hello. They're pretty good at polite conversation as well. Looking on today, Caroline. It's all about Novo Nordisk, of course. We're getting numbers from the biggest insulin maker, Mark, and profit is set to rise 25%. We want to know how numbers in a little bit, but now you can get over to Ryan to discuss, discuss some rather successful tech investors. Then we'll go on to sport, because I think everybody else has a sporting story. Caroline, you've got some tennis. Yes, because Murray, dear Murray, has a, a shadow of his former self, the Guardian calls him. They say, really, yeah, a shadow of the player who... Out. You picked up on the, the same story. I did, but I'm going to do something different for you guys. We'll mix it. helps profitability. He's not saying it drops onto your bottom line by investing on digital, but clearly it's all about building your brand. It's about being known by consumers, not only in London, but across the world. And, of course, digital is a great way of doing that. It is, Caroline. Thanks very much indeed. It's been fine. The favourite story of the morning. It's Anna's favourite story of the morning. She wouldn't do it, though, so we gave it to Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Very revealing. She it the comes from the behind the scenes. Does that mean Ryan's going to start? Here we go. <laughs> Ryan. The UK, you have a survey for everything. There is the national... <laughs> And Lifestyle comes out one. It's a very good read. I'm only giving you just... Why, did, why very... didn't you want to do this story? I just thought that Ryan would add his <laughs> details on his subject. <laughs> or a tablet. <laughs> An abacus. Okay, <laughs> we'll stop it, it there. Children's Caroline. Tablets. This is... I didn't know that this had got all the way to the Middle East. Arabs got talent. And what is taking the world by storm is the fact that the person looks, who's in the final of Arabs got talent is maybe they've tried at home, had limited success, <laughs> they'd try a different market. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, can, yeah. you can travel and Coming find a market, a market that likes it. Talent, talent <laughs> tourism. Yeah, here we go. Now, you're not doing Jim Morrison's I'm chest, not, are you? No, don't be put off by Jim Morrison's. Even consider following <laughs> this diet. So there we go. I've done my public service broadcasting bit for this morning. Get ready. We cricket. don't traditionally, it's it is cricket. Traditionally, but it's the microphones that are picking all this stuff up, which they didn't do in the old days. And on a sadder note, but mm. it shows the reality of uh, test match cricket and professional sport. Jonathan Trott, who's had a torrid time of it since he landed in Australia, he's headed back to England because of a stress related illness. And it, had, it has happened before. Marcus Triscotic mm. left the Ashes series a couple of years ago, as did another cricketer called Matthew Hardy. So it has happened, and it shows the stresses these sportsmen are under. Countdown. You are, and inside your belly, but globally, it's in short supply, isn't it? <laughs> there is, because demand is hitting a record high this year overall, Mark. I'm here in Paul Young. The master chocolatier himself is downstairs concocting more of these incredible truffles. The smell of cocoa is so overpowering, absolutely sensational. And of course, as we in the West, develop a more of a taste for this more luxurious type of chocolate with higher cocoa solids and of course Asia the demand is exploding that's reaching record highs well, that's causing a disbalance we're seeing demand outstripping supply in fact we're seeing a shortfall at the moment in terms of cocoa supply is for this year and it's going to continue for the next six years that of course is having knock-on effects for the cost of cocoa the price of cocoa up 15 percent next year that's the expectation it's already up 25 percent so far this year. And Caroline, what's preventing an increase in cocoa supply to meet surging demand? Yeah, because 70,000 tonnes is a lot of cocoa that needs to be provided. Why are they not managing to produce it quickly enough? Well, the 2.5% increase in prices, they're not seeing that at the moment. Prices just rose 3% for the growers. They're not then able to invest to increase their own yields and their own product. And are chocolate makers trying to cash in on this escalating demand? Yeah, so certainly Grow is not able to quite cash in yet, but the chocolate makers are at the moment, and they're investing heavily themselves. So, yes, their own costs are going up, but it is added extras, of course, the milk that they need to use for the products, and indeed the selling. But at the moment, the likes of Nestle, Lint, all of them looking at Asia as a major area of increasing their overall supplies over there. We're going to see a lot of investment in, in chocolate plants from the likes of Hershey going forward. They're opening one in Indonesia as I speak. Back to you.
is she going to tuck into another one? What I do don't know. I don't know. I'm just. Which one do you fancy? Just, um, Which one do you fancy? Go on. Oh, g g uh, yeah, one of those white ones. That looks nice, Caroline. <laughs> Unless it's got too much alcohol in it and it's going to, you know, throw you off for the rest of the morning. We wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> Caroline, thank you very much. More from Caroline in the chocolate shop. If we can find her amongst yeah. all those truffles later on. Now a new.